Hello and welcome back to the Keepers Inc. Well, this is the second time recording this. The first time it didn't go so well, so let's hope Action Take Two works better. So today I'm recording this for um, new players to Space Engineers. Um, I've introduced about three or four friends to uh, to SE, and uh, I promise to uh, to show them the ropes. However, due to time and uh, things, I've not been able to show them everything needed to get started in the game. So I figured making a video would give them something to watch and have the basic clue of what's going on. So first things first, I will say to you, there is a character option here to customize your character. It has settings, suits and bits. I wouldn't worry about it right now. A lot of people will click this button. You'll get a loading screen and then you'll go into a suit customization button. Feel free to play with that. My advice to you as a new player is, first of all, go into the options, go to um, graphics, select where it says quality preset. If you're on a decent computer, um, you know, that can handle high settings, if, the, if it's already selected you like, and guessed your settings as high, my advice is switch them back down to medium or at the very least copy what uh, you can see on the screen there. So basically model quality and texture quality on high and pretty much everything else on lower and disable the shadow quality. Right now, shadows are kind of eh inside SE at the time of recording this in March uh, 2018. And to be honest, it doesn't really make that much difference. It, it's, it's a quality of life thing if you really, really want shadows, but I really wouldn't worry about it too much. Um... It's more helpful, I guess, if you're playing on planets with, with flying drones. But anyway, we're getting to that in a minute. Um, if you're on a lower end machine, then leave the default settings of what it guessed it as. I'd still, even on the lowest computer, still put the model quality up to high. Because 99% of machines will still be able to handle it if you can play the game. The lower end models are really not that great. And makes the game look really horrible may even turn you off from playing. So um, I would recommend turning flare intensity all the way down to 0 0.1 because you still get huge flares even with that setting. It's the flare of the sun. Um, and for other lens flare multipliers. So yes, field of view is your own setting. Um, same with most of these. Um, if you're on a planet, then tree draw distance will come into play. I'd recommend setting it to lower rather than higher. But you can alter this on the fly if you're going to be exploring a planet and you want to be able to see trees in the distance before you smack into them. Um, grass density, I would recommend turning this down. I have mine set to 1 to 1 1.2 um, and I've got a beefy machine and I still set mine at only 130 meters because there's really no need to make the computer draw loads of grass right across an entire distance that you can view which is about 20k if you fly up in the sky so yeah uh ambient occlusion is your own option post-processing again and damage effects i would say leave on unless you really need to turn them off because it will help you notice if things are damaged so yeah press ok and the next thing i would recommend doing if you haven't already done it is going to the audio options and turn the music pretty much off. If you're playing with friends, which I know my friends will be playing with me, they're going to be using comms and having the music blaring in the background is not a good thing. If you want to listen to the soundtracks, quite honestly, when you're on your own level and you're just doodling around, I'm sure they'll be quite dramatic for you at one point or another. Some people like it. I personally don't. It's up to you. Wouldn't recommend doing that music for streaming. Um, I personally have had um, two flags from YouTube while having the background music on. So there you go. I have my setting at about a quarter. However, it depends on what quality headset you're using, how loud you've got it, etc, etc. So adjust these settings. In-game voice is not brilliant. You have to be within 200 meters to use it. So you can't use it from ship to ship unless you have antennas and things. It's kind of realistic in that respect. 
um, you can enable it with that setting there. Um, everything else in there I'd have left exactly as it is. Controls. Going into controls, go down to system and interaction. Um, this will become apparent once you actually get in game. I recommend if you have a full size keyboard, setting your helmet on and off to something obscure. For me, I have mine set to numpad 7. It's out of the way um, near my build keys, which are the page up, page down, home, insert, delete, and end key. So I have that set to number 7 out of the way. The default is J. I recommend altering that because going into the K menu, you'll probably press your helmet off at one point or another and be very annoying. So there you go. Uh, let's see what other ones we've got in here. Okay, game settings. If you're going to mess around in creative at any point i would recommend setting this build option build mode to line it will help you immensely especially if the default i believe is still single block uh, the other thing i could say to you is if you want to turn off the annoying control hints on the screen when you get in game you can turn them off with this option there same with the rotation hints i'm going to leave those on but um some people will find it more confusing having them on than off so there we go uh let's see what else is on here right okay so that's mostly the settings um for setting up um i'd recommend um starting a new game um and going to custom just ignore all this extra bit i've got some workshop stuff and a custom mission of my own and also, if you wanted to play the through the campaign, uh, you can do so by clicking the first jump and hitting start. It's not multiplayer friendly um, and really and truly is not that finished and polished. It does have some bugs and they do expect you to kind of know a little bit about the game and how to play before you play through that. OK, so um, in custom game. You will get a whole bunch of options here. Ignore anything that says easy. It's a lie. Um, honestly, you can play around with them if you want to. But quite frankly, easy starts are not exactly brilliant for a new player. Um, my advice to you would be is on the Lone Survivor. If you really, 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 really want to do an easy start, you could go for the, the, the space one. I wouldn't recommend starting on a planet or a moon on your first time out i recommend lone survivor because it throws you in quite literally at the deep end with no ships and literally gets you started and forces you to build something that's functional and while that might be a pain to try and work out how to do it it does help new players get started properly uh, so first thing to do is select i'm going to select lone survivor um, if you've got a beefy system, you could also try the um, star system and use a spawn ship. Um, I'm going to select Lone Survivor. And I'm going to call this my world hash one. And I name all my, my worlds with hash one or hash two, etc. Um, Getting started, yeah, we'll just call it that. Getting started. Okay, so a few settings on this main screen. First of all, the offline function. If you're just playing on your own, this is the option you would want to use. Um, if you want to leave your game running to um, refine assemblies, things, etc., I would say still use this. It would allow you to actually pause the game via the pause break key on your keyboard. Um, I believe possibly... There is another key as well. I'm not completely sure on that one. But if you're going to play with your friends, then I would suggest setting it to private mode. Now, the reason I'm suggesting you don't use friends is because you can alter this once you're in game and you can literally set it to friends and um, then set it back to, say, private after your friends have joined to prevent friends that you're not inviting to join you, I guess. I have mine set to private all the time, so that'd be my advice. Auto save. I'd recommend leaving this on. You can adjust the amount of time, amount of backups it takes. 
and you can also adjust the amount of minimum uh, amount of maximum players you can have in the game. You can also adjust this in game. So next and not uh, not least is the advanced options. Yes, you can just hit start. It will work, but you'll have things turned on that you probably shouldn't as a new player. So into the advanced options, very easy. My advice for starting out is take the times 10 inventory and set it down to times three. You're probably thinking to yourself, but won't that make it harder? No, it will make it fairer and you'll learn to play the game better um, rather than having it too easy. Which is something that players find difficult to shrink down to a smaller inventory after they started in times 10. Speaking from experience. Uh, okay, first thing to alter, ignore all the assembly, refinery, welder and grinding settings. You can adjust these if you want to, but I warn you now, setting the grinding speed at times 5 or welding speed at times 5, you may as well be in creative. Just pointing that out. There are tiered tools to make you weld and grind faster. So leaving them on times two is perfectly fine. I actually set mine down to realistic. So just to give you the heads up, at least for the grinding speed anyway. So anyway, environmental hostility, you want to set that to safe. This will stop meteorites coming in from the sun or from anywhere else and um, destroying your base. Um, asteroid amount. I would recommend leaving this as low density. The low density is not low. It is, in fact, huge and still spawns tons and tons and tons and tons of asteroids. Flora density is something for planets. Um, it only affects planets. And I would recommend turning it to none. No, it will not turn off all the trees. There will still be pretty trees or ugly trees, depending on your view of it. But it will turn them down to the absolute minimum spawn level. And it will not cause extra problems for you later on once you've actually built something in the world. Uh, arcade mode for sound, I would recommend leaving this as it is um, until you're used to the game and want to get a more realistic experience. Um, the realistic mode has some bonuses, I guess, but it also has a lot of drawbacks. And for a new player... Not being able to hear when you're welding, grinding, shooting, getting attacked is not ideal. So leave it in leave it in arcade mode until you're used to how to play the game. World side. Leave this as unlimited. Don't ever want to water this unless you're specifically setting up a scenario or some other thing that you specifically want to limit the size. Um, and be warned, if you go above the 100k, if, someone, if you actually set it to that and someone drives outside of 100k from the centre their ship or their player character will get told to go back or you'll be deleted. And then it will promptly delete it, especially if you don't get a chance to turn around in time. So leave that on unlimited. That's fine. View distance. If you're on a lower end machine, set this down a bit. You can set that all the way down to 5K if you wanted to. I personally leave mine on 20. I've got a beefy machine. I can actually have it all the way up at 50 without any issues. But 20 works for the most part. Respawn. If you're playing with friends that you know are not going to abuse the respawn ships, feel free to turn this, or, or for yourself, that is, turn this cooldown to disabled. That way then if you crash your respawn ship for some reason and you want to immediately take another one because you failed a landing on a planet or whatever, you can do so without having to wait the enormous amount of time it takes. Day duration. Okay, so this is the sun revolving around planets. Yes, I did say that correct or around asteroids if you're just in space. And this is the time it will take to move around the entire skybox. I would recommend setting this about an hour. If you're on a planet, I would say possibly set this about four hours for your first day, but then you can alter the duration in game via the admin menu, which I will show you briefly. Um, maximum objects. While it says on the tooltip here, it can significantly affect performance if you take it above 64 well maybe back when the game first came out that was true but not today don't put it up at a thousand but quite honestly setting at about 170 is perfectly fine for 99 percent of machines actually hosting this game which requires a pretty beefy machine to begin with block limits 
this is meant to give you some kind of limitation and reduce the number of things you can put in game per player. To be honest, I turn it off. For a new player, if you're playing with friends that you know are not going to go stupid with huge ships that have stupid number of blocks, feel free to leave that off. But if you think they're going to go silly or they start to, log out, save the world, obviously, and you can come and switch this limit on and set it appropriately. Bear in mind that if a ship is already above um, per block um, 100,000, that ship will not necessarily get destroyed, but, um, you know, um, it will not allow them to build any more onto it. So just be cautious of that. Um, but I'm going to turn that off. It's going to give a warning um, only for experimental uses. Just ignore it. It's fine. Backups. I normally switch this down to three, but I know my mouse has been rather finicky today. And I'm just going to leave it on its default. That will be fine for most players. You can leave copy and paste enabled if you are an admin. You may need this for the purpose of um, using the admin tools and actually copying and pasting to replace ships if they're lost, if you choose to do that. We'll get into that down the road. Spectator mode is something you can put on for the purpose of being able to spectate around without actually viewing someone's ship and physically being there in the in in the um, spacesuit. You can go into spectator view and zoom around the world really fast. Can be disorientating, so possibly leave that off for the first time you're playing. Ignore the reset ownership button. You don't need to worry about that. Permanent death, I would leave this off for a first-time player because basically it means that if you lose your only med medical bay, you basically get game over. And it also means then if you send take a spawn ship to go back to your stuff, your stuff will be gone. It will delete your stuff. You have to keep an active med bay and protect it. Can be fun, but at the same time can also be rather annoying, especially with game glitches in... In, in, in there and whatnot so yes leave all of the other stuff exactly as it is you'll be perfectly fine with that i would say possibly turn off the uh, random encounters and turning on or off the cargo ships is a personal preference cargo ships will spawn random npcs throughout the world and they will fly in from time to time you can attack them and capture them um, some of them are quite hard other of them are quite easy my personal opinion is stay away from anything that says military um, and you'll probably be OK. Um, you'll probably need a ship to take them out with a camera on to zoom in. Uh, so next down here, the only other thing I possibly say for a first time player is turn off the drill shake. But it's not so bad these days, so possibly leave that on. Enable air tightness. OK, so th what this does is allow the use of pressurized environments on ships and stations, and it can cause a little bit of lag. So providing you're not trying to pressurize 17 rooms and depressurize them constantly, you should be fine with this. Um, and I have 17 being an arbitrary number, but if you don't abuse it, you'll be fine. If you are running a public server, certainly don't have this on. You'll cause more lag than you can possibly imagine. Um, but anyway, um, moving on quickly, um, starting the spawn screen, just ignore, um, start with tools is a personal preference option. I have this off normally, but I would recommend for new characters to put this on. Um, let's see drones, drones spawn into the world. The random pirates generated from time to time. They will attack ships and enemies. They will also try and attack you with their drones if you get within range. So if you're trying to attack ship cargo ships and you have drones enabled, the pirates will send drones after the cargo ships and protect them from you. And then drones will then follow you all the way back to your base and attack you at your base. It can be quite devastating if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to turn the drones off but leave the cargo ships off on spiders and wolves are for use on planets the spiders for the alien planet the wolves for the um earth-like planet i personally leave them off especially for new players leave them off 
They're fun if you want to get into that, but they are also a major ammo sink. So not a good idea for first time playing. Uh, let's see. Enable damage friendly turrets. Turn that off. Enable subgrids. You can leave that off as well. And I think that's just about everything. Uh, so click OK. And there's one more important thing to do, which is to turn this game to survival mode, if you haven't already. So turn it to survival. And then we're going to set some mods. OK, I will list these mods in the description below. But the first is going to be eyes. And it's the eyes just got clear mod. Um, and also the invisible. Oh, invisible armor edges. Um, I would also recommend CJ's camera overlay tweak, which will clean up the camera from its dirty, dirty vanilla look. I would also possibly recommend the rotating and panning camera, which allows you to rotate and pan your camera. So that's kind of cool. Although for a new person, maybe not the best thing, but I, I personally would recommend it. It, it's a good start for four mods. If you are on a planet, I would recommend getting the ladders by Digi. And if you just find all of the in-game inventory really, really hard to navigate and remember what you need for what thing, um, I would recommend looking up a mod called Easy Inventory. Um, I will link it in the description below, but I'm not going to be putting it on this world. You will also need the text HUD API mod as well for that. But those two will make it a little bit easier. Now, the eyes just got clear. Do alter things from vanilla. So just be aware of that. But that's the four mods I would recommend starting with. And if you've played a little bit and you're annoyed with the inventory, switch on the other one. So I'm all ready to go now. I've named my world, I've set up the settings, I've got it set to private. If you're just playing with you on your own, you can use offline. I personally never do. I always have mine set to private. So I'm going to hit start. It's going to download the mods real quick, which I already have. It may take a few moments for you, depending on your connection speed. And then you're in game. OK, so just check my time. OK, so we're at 22 minutes. So I'm going to call this here, right here. Only thing I'm going to show you is is on F3, you can adjust the lobby type to friends, to public, and you can adjust the number of players up to 16. I would never, ever recommend running a public game off your computer unless you really, really know what you're doing. The other thing I will briefly tell you is if you press Alt and F10, you can get into the Space Master menu which can be used to adjust lots of things, clean up, and do other things. Uh, in the Space Master mode, uh, sorry, in the Admin Tools mode, um, you can set the time of day. And if you look, I'm adjusting the sun's rotation. It's there, and I'm adjusting it in the sky. They've recently added this in. It used to be in the Debug menu. But they've now added it in down there. So I am I'm also gonna briefly say to you the G menu by pressing G. You can adjust your menus along the bottom here. But I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna put an animation on my bar. Uh, and I will speak to you all next time. Bye bye. Take care. Save this.